what's in here looks like it's a lot, uh, this, this technology is going to help us make sure we can deliver consistent service. So this is what we call a model board, right? So this shows everything within Myrix interlocking. These two tracks are the tracks that go to Fall River. These two are the ones that continue to New Bedford. And this is critical for signal maintainers that have to test, inspect, maintain, or troubleshoot any of these systems after the fact. They're inspected at a minimum of every 30 days. This bungalow, as you see it today, even though it's brand new, if we were to come back 10 years from now, it's gonna look like this. By the nature, railroads are very reliant on commercial power. Right? We use it to charge batteries, we use it to run signal systems, we use it to, to run our operation. But we live in a world where sometimes we can't rely on that. This is an example of the backup generator just for this interlocking. Right? Plenty of power to run the heaters, the signal systems, the crossing protection, so that we, we can go on for days and days and days without commercial power being available. Every wire you see, every rack you see, Every power feed has to be tested and tested and retested. And then, once you know that you have power, for example, with this relay in, you now have to test this relay and this relay and this relay. And how does this 1TR talk to this 31WENR? So the testing involved for any new build, it is so detailed, but it has to be. Uh, 2017, there was an incident that occurred out in Washington State uh, with a new start commuter rail operation. Uh, that train went into a curve at three times the speed limit. That train flipped over and landed on an interstate highway. Uh, it, was, uh, it was a horrible circumstance. The Federal Railroad Administration enacted a new starts program in the aftermath of that incident, which takes this level of testing detailed, you know, static testing inside a bungalow and transform that out into dynamic testing. Focus not just around train crews, right, engineers and conductors, but we actually will get to a point in the not too distant future where we have to simulate the regular operation, right? And that's the regular schedule like we're going to run. Trains will be fully staffed. They'll be making station stops. Crews will be opening doors. Signal maintainers will be in here doing their testing, doing their troubleshooting. And the idea is to make sure that all of those systems all work together and don't introduce any unseen risk. These, just like a surge protector in your house, prevent the big damage from occurring to all of this. So I would expect after a lightning storm in this area to walk in and find, you know, this whole row blown out. And by blown out, you can see these all, they're clear. When they get blown out, that lightning bolt comes through these wires and explodes these versus exploding these. We replace them, put new ones in, and we go back to business. But all of this is here for the what if. I'm going to say between Middleborough to Cotley to Myrix to Fall River and New Bedford, there's going to be similar to this in install. There's probably another. I'm going to say 15 bungalows and you probably have another 25 to 30 smaller bungalows um, that again all have the same requirements, the same testing, the same uh, protections built into them. There, there's, a, there's four flanged guide wheels. They act as like the train wheels. Um, the rims are inset a little bit to make your rubber tires line up with the actual running rail. So you get that lined up, you set the rear on first, because the front you can always move. Uh, set the rear on, center your steering wheel, you lock your steering wheel, um, and that's it. This is, this is available, it's accessible, and um, it actually gives you a much better perspective at this level than being surrounded by, you know, 800 tons of train. Um, if we're in a train, we're zipping along at 79, um, this actually gives you the ability to see what's going on. It's not just a matter of we put new rail down, we built new track, and now we're going to run trains. We built a new station, and that's it. There is so building the station, honestly, is easy. You know, you can build a house in you know six weeks. You can build a station in a year. 
it's all of this that takes time because it has to be right. Right? The Code of Federal Regulation for railroads is about that thick. And it's in like the smallest possible <laughs> font. Um, and it reads like regulation. Yeah. Right? It's very black and white, very prescriptive. But they're minimums. And you know, the MBTA, you know, being so attached to the railroad side of the house, I take a lot of pride in knowing that our internal standards are more restrictive in most cases than what the what the CFR calls for. Look, we, we, we would love to be at a different place where we're we're saying all the testing is done and we're going to start service next week. But we can't rush it. It has to be perfect.